Just got a fat mark coming in here, suspended. Might be one fish, might be two, might be three. I don't even know. Oh, it's chasing. Oh, that's nasty. We're heading out early, early morning, trying to make stuff happen. It's Mac, we're back. We're gonna crush some lake choke today. Stay tuned, hope you guys enjoy. We're out at the spot I think we're gonna try to fish. And I'm just gonna kinda show you guys what I'm gonna start out with here. I'm gonna start out with dragging a Cisco on the bottom. I'm gonna show you how I like to rig these up. This, this is a bit of a newer technique to me. Um, a good buddy of mine, Daryl Gilbert, uh, recommended it to me. He has a YouTube channel too, check him out, Daryl Gilbert Outdoors. But I'm gonna show you guys kind of what I found best for rigging these Cisco's for on the bottom. And you need a couple things. You need a bait needle and you need some good treble hooks to put in the Cisco and you're pretty much set after that but let me show you what i do here so i run a triple swivel like a three-way rig basically and i got a super light break off here in case the weight gets snagged then the weight just breaks off and i don't lose everything and what i've actually done here is i've added a split ring and a swivel and that'll just help eliminate some of the line twists because what i do here is i make it so that cisco basically is curled and it spins like a slow death basically a lot, of, a lot of the walleye guys that use slow death hooks will know what i'm talking about but basically it's just like a super slow twirl through the water and it'll keep that bait up off the bottom a little bit more and it'll entice those fish to hopefully commit so i just start out by doing a little knot on the bait needle here and what i actually like to do is i like to go through the chin and then straight through the fish. I like to try to get it as straight as I possibly can. And then once I'm through a few inches, then I pick a side. And you wanna come out through the side, somewhat in the middle of the fish, not like at the top or at the bottom. Oh, come on. Sometimes it can be a little tricky. Try not to stab yourself when you're doing it. Done that before, it sucks and stinks. Okay, so we got that needle coming through here. Perfect. So, let's pull that guy through there. So now that we got that through, slide that off. Where are we? Got some pliers here. Just snip that line. And then I'll just tie this rig on. Yeah, I know. I shouldn't use my teeth. <clears throat> but after you get that through there, tie your rig on. I just got a quick strike rig. Same kind of thing you run in the winter. Basically just tied to the shank of the next hook and a few inches down kind of deal. Nothing too special. You could probably honestly use a little bit bigger hooks for this, but I think we should be okay with these smaller ones. If those fish are going to bite this thing, usually they're going to inhale it. It's not just going to be a little tap. It's going to be a engulf. tied on there so now you can see basically this Cisco is like a I don't know if you, anyone is familiar with like Savage Gear stuff but basically this is like a line through system that Cisco is just straight through the line goes straight through it so then I'll do one hook in the side somewhere try to get it so it's a little bit farther down so then that Cisco will actually curl you want that Cisco to curl if it's not curled, then it'll just float straight through the water, which might be good too, but I like to try to keep a bit of a bend in them, something like that. And this way that Cisco will be curling and swirling as it goes through the water. And I actually like to jam a hook on both sides, something along the lines of that. And let me just get this trolling motor going here and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So now that this boat's moving, you can see the weight here and the bait. So I'm gonna just drop that bait in there. And you'll see exactly what I mean about that slow death spin. You can see right there, that's exactly what I mean. 
You see how that Cisco spins super nice and slow like that? It just looks super natural, some degree. I mean, it's not super natural, fish doesn't swim like that, but it's that natural bait fish presence and it'll hopefully get some of those bigger fish to entice. So this will be doing that perfect slow death roll all the way down there along the bottom. And this weight, what I do is I basically use it like a bottom bouncer for walleye and I'm just dragging the bottom and that Cisco is just floating behind it doing that. So let's see how this goes. Doing this technique, you're definitely not looking for numbers. This is more of a technique for bigger fish specifically. Obviously small fish might go after it, but your hookup chances might be a little bit lower and it's a big bait, right? So I mean bigger bait, kind of trying to hone in on that bigger bite. So don't use this and expect to catch a lot of fish, but you can definitely hone in on some bigger fish, I think. Right now, what I'm doing too is uh, like the structure I'm going along, it's basically just kind of a gradual drop off, but I'm going along at that same depth the whole way. And I'm just dragging it along the bottom in 83 feet of water the whole way. So all those fish that are down below will be able to see that silhouette. And hopefully one of these big girls will come up and smoke it. All right, so I'm getting sick of trolling. Marking fish down there, but nothing's eating the bigger bait. So I'm going to try some jigging. I'll put down a few waypoints when I was trolling. It's always a good idea whenever you're trolling or, or uh, scouring around. Drop a few waypoints. You can always delete them after, but throw a few waypoints down on whatever you find. Something cool like a little drop off, rocks, sand, or some sort of transition. Or if you're marking uh, fish kind of congregating around a certain area, throw some waypoints down. It doesn't hurt. I did a lot of scouring around. Took a little bit longer than anticipated, but I marked a lot of fish out here in this little bit deeper water on the edges. And I'm gonna set us up right on top of here. So we're gonna spot lock right on top of this little kind of point off of the main drop off. And hopefully we're able to get some of those fish to come up off the deeper water. Come up here and hopefully they'll be feeding up here on the little bit shallower water. Sometimes I find a lake trout in the deeper water can be super docile and just really, really hard to get to bite. So hopefully those fish are able to be coaxed up here onto the shallower water and hopefully they're gonna come up and smash some bait. I'm starting out with this little four inch glow tube from drop time tackle and I got a little bit of Cisco belly on there, keeping it streamlined, keeping the hook covered. Got a fish coming in here above me. Oh, here we go. Come on. There's actually two. There's another one up above me. Race up to the high one. Oh, missed him. No. Embarrassing. Drop back down. Come on, buddy. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Let's go. Let's go. One and done. He's falling down over here off to the side. Kind of odd. What do you do? Another fish swooping in here up high. Two of them actually, there's two up high. There's one like right up under the surface. This one's more aggressive. Come on, buddy. Two of you guys and you won't even touch it. Come on, man. Oh, this one's coming back on the fall. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Crush it, crush it, crush it. Come on, crush it, crush it, crush it. Crush that thing, bro. Oh, man. He liked it quick there, but he still missed it. Oh, come on. 
Come on, dude. Got to break the ice here. All right, so we swapped out that glow to a nice chartreuse with another little piece of meat in there. We'll see how this one does. Man, this one just shot in so quick here. I think it hit me. Oh man, I'm missing. This fish just shot in nowhere. It was so fast. Look how freaking dirty this thing is. Oh, I think he hit it. Missed my game. I suck. Look how fast this freaking fish is. The old game of cat and mouse. There we go, finally. Finally hooked him. Not a big fish by any means, but the lake trout's a lake trout for us today. Oh, we got our first lake trout of the day. This one barely got hooked too, just barely in the snout. Look at that, I pinned them right through both jaws. So what that tells me is these are not very aggressive right now. Well there we go, our first lake trout. And uh, by the way I hooked it there, I can kind of tell they're not actually feeding that much. What, uh, what lake trout do when they're not feeding is they have this little row of uh, pores basically along their jaw. And basically that's their way of uh, smelling and tasting. So. A lot of times you'll see those fish, they'll charge you up and they'll actually come up and they'll just rub their jaw on it. And that's just them coming up and tasting it, but not necessarily in a feeding mood. So hopefully the lake chote start to get more aggressive and stop coming around and tasting it. Just got a fat mark coming in here, suspended. Might be one fish, might be two, might be three. I don't even know. Oh, it's chasing. Oh, that smashed it. That one definitely feels a little bit different than the other one. Bubbled right now. Man, that fish just came in on the live scope. I just reeled up quick and it freaking smashed it. You can see on the live scope now, it's all the way off. About 30 feet on the other side of the boat. This is crazy. Heavy, heavy duty right now. Goes to show you don't always need a big bait to catch big fish, obviously. Not saying we've caught it yet, but we got it to bite at least. But that thing freaking drilled it. Chased up about 25 feet there, I'd say. Smashed it. She's still right down on the bottom. Holy man. Holy smokes. Whoa. That thing is powerful. Just heavy. I knew as soon as I set the hook on it, it was a bit of a better fish because it wasn't squirrely. It was just, I set the hook, it was heavy. It was coming up with me but I could tell it was a bit different than that smaller one I caught earlier. It's putting up a heck of a fight. This is so awesome. And again, same as the last video, it shows the grind for lake trout is a, is a thing. It's not just something you get right off the bat. You gotta put in the time, it'll work for them. Going in circles here, holy man. Oh, that's a really nice one. Should be able to see it way out there. Oh, going for a peel here. That's so awesome. You can see that thing way down there. Bubbles are coming up. You can see the bubbles all the way out here on the surface. All the bubbles are coming up from this girl. Let's get it around to this side here. Super nice fish. Gorgeous one. Hooked good right inside of the face. 
see her fighting down there. She's doing some crazy acrobatic stuff right now. Try to keep her away from the motor and live scope pole. Okay, she's tiring out. Come on. No, get away from that pole, you idiot. Oh boy. Okay, in the basket. The clam net does it again. Look at that, that drop tine tube right in the corner of the mouth. Look at that. God. Easy there, big girl. Easy, easy. Easy. She's all wrapped up. Okay, there we go. That drop tine tube right there. Sealed the deal. I'll put a link to these tubes in the caption below. Check them out. Like I said, super awesome baits. Um, Thatcher, the guy that, that owns the company, he's such an awesome dude. Done a bit of work with him in the past. Stellar dude. Lots of respect for that guy. Puts out some awesome products. Relax, relax. Oh. Freaking gorgeous fish. Check out the nog on that thing. That's the old relic. Look at that big pig. That's an awesome fish. Super old, like I said. You can definitely tell with these fish that they are super old when they got that big bony head. We got a 41 and 3 quarter. One last look at that beast. Check out that head. Gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Let's get an awesome release on it. Oh, so important to take good care of these big fish. Gorgeous fish. And that just shows you like that big girl came up and smashed that tube. Those big fish are scavengers, but they are definitely active hunters as well. Look at her out there just cruising. That's so cool to see. Just a gorgeous fish. Well, can't complain about a fish like that, that's for sure. A little bit of chaos and disarray in the boat, but awesome fish. So happy we got that one on camera and our jigging bait to boot. Like I said, drop time tackle. Check out these baits. Super, super good baits. He makes some rig tubes as well that he calls the hunger strike tubes. They have a blade on the back and a treble on the bottom. They're one of my favorite baits for winter. I use them quite a bit in the summer too, but this one sealed the deal today. A little bit of Cisco belly on there. And the biggest thing I like about uh, these drop time jigs is now these hooks are like saltwater grade. They're crazy strong, crazy sharp and they hold a point very well. If you sharpen them yourself, they stay sharp very long time. I'll put the link below, but check them out. Get the heart pumping. Fired up now. I was just thinking like, I mean, you sit out here on the lake by yourself and your thoughts go through your head. Like, do I move? Do I stay? Do I grind it out? Do I try trolling? Do I try another spot? But, that's just kind of the mental games of lake trout fishing. You just got to stick to your gut, whatever you think, just stick to it. Your first choice is honestly usually your best choice, so just stick to it with the, with the lake trout. Just put in the time, wait it out. It can take a while, it can pay off, it, it may not, but I've seen a lot of times where you're just about to pack up or you pack up and someone goes to where you were or whatever and they score that big fish you're waiting for. So. Stick it out, grind it out, it might be worth it. I've seen it many, many times. The big fish come late. <laughs>